Hello and welcome to today's episode. Today I'm outside on the trunk deck. It's a night time. We've got deck lighting pointing out on deck. I've got my portable Motorola, my portable explosion meter, gas meter, and the AB who's patrolling out on deck and he's heading forward. So since we have some deck uh, lighting on, it's a good opportunity to carry out this episode and explain on today's episode regarding the cargo safety relief systems that are available on board LNG carriers. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, don't forget to do that by clicking on the click in all notification button and of course leave a comment below so that I can come back to you as sap. So off we go. Exclusive footage for you is available on this episode today so I will be showing you the safety relief valves on deck so that you can get good knowledge of them by watching this video. So stay tuned and enjoy. To protect the cargo containment systems from harmful over pressure or under pressure at all times in accordance with the IMO gas code, the IGC code, requirements as per chapter 8 that all cargo tanks are provided with a pressure relief system which is the appropriate to the design of the cargo containment system and the cargo being carried. Hold spaces into barrier spaces and cargo piping which may be subject to pressures beyond their design capabilities are also provided with a suitable pressure relief system. Cargo tanks, including deck tanks, are fitted with a minimum of two pressure relief valves, each being equal of size with manufacturer tolerances and suitably designed and constructed for the prescribed service. Inter-barrier spaces, which I'm going to show you in a while, are also provided with pressure relief valves. In regards now to the cargo tank safety relief valves, we have a total set of eight. Every tank has two. They are pilot operated type and the set pressures are between 0 0.25 bars or 0 0.35 bars. The relieving capacity that they can provide is 47,600 approximately uh, cubics per hour. Each cargo tank is fitted with two equally sized pressure relief valves connected to the highest part of the cargo tank, installed above deck level and connected to a venting system. Relief valves on each tank are connected to a common line and discharged to the vent mast equipped with protection screen and cowl. Resonators on the cargo tank safety relief valves pilot inlet pipes to be applied in order to safeguard against relief valve opening during pressure peaks. Two sets of manual operated butterfly type valves are provided for each cargo tank for emergency insulation as per the new IGC code. If you haven't read it, please have a look on the new IGC code. You will find good things there. Emergency isolation methods procedures is described at the section 4.15.4 of this manual as per GTT recommendation. In regards to the emergency isolation, I would suggest that you have a quick review on the manufacturers of the tank and read out their recommendations on how, how to isolate the method and how this is done. At any times, do not touch the safety valve during operation because you may catch a frostbite. IBS or safety relief valves. We have a total of eight sets which are two per each uh, IBS. The set pressure is at 0 0.03 bars and approximately the relieving capacity is at uh, 438 uh, cubics per hour. In regards to the insulation spaces we have again total eight, two per each IS space which the set pressure is a little bit above than the IBS and it's set it at 0 0.035 bars. Relieving capacity is approximately 500 Qs per hour. So now in regards to the uh, inter-barrier and insulation spaces which are protected against overpressure by two safety relief valves, the following apply. 
The pressure in the interbarrier and insulation spaces is normally kept below the vapour pressure in the cargo tanks. The safety relief valves are pilot operated of the fail safe design. The discharges of the interbarrier spaces and insulation space are led to IBS vent mast without connection with a tank safety valves mast. The discharges of insulation spaces are directly vented on deck but also are led to the IS vent mask. These valves have a relieving capacity to discharge the maximum volume of gas which is considered under the following conditions. A failure of the nitrogen supply valves in the full open position. Warm up of the tank and insulation space at the maximum rate possible due to capacity limits of the warm up heater and high duty compressors on failure of the nitrogen exhaust valves in closed position. Vaporization of cargo as a result of liquid leakage through the primary barrier. The IBS and IS safety relief valves are in principle similar to the cargo tank safety relief valve and similar cautionary points have to be applied. So be careful in case they open, please do not touch them. Cargo pipeline safety relief valves. Well, they're quite a lot. We have set pressures at 10 bars, at 0.6 and at 15 bars. You may find them on the liquid main header, on the X over, on the liquid main, on between the liquid manifolds, in between the liquid main around the liquid dome, on the spray X over valves, on the spray main header, spray line around the liquid dome, from header to vaporizers, LNG vaporizer, inlet and outlet, forcing vaporizer, inlet and outlet, vaporizers inlet, nitrogen pressure header, fuel gas line, low duty compressor discharge, spray line of number three and number four cargo tanks, liquid dome, and of course on the subcooler inlet outlet connections. So, in regards now to the cargo pipeline safety relief valve systems, there are spring-loaded safety valves and are fitted where required by the class on the cargo liquid pipe piping. Each part of cargo pipes where liquid may be trapped between two valves are provided with a relief valve to avoid high pressure buildup. Relief valves are also be provided for the ends of the cargo liquid manifolds outboard of the vessel's manifold valves. The cargo liquid and spraying header are protected by at least two relief valves, one on the fore and one on the aft part. Outlet of the safety relief valves for liquid line is led to the cargo tanks with a valve arrangement to allow safe entry to any one tank. A non-return valve and a spectacle flange are fitted at the tank connection. The relief valves are set to open at the design pressure of the respective pipe section and be seized in accordance with the pipeline volume. In regards now to the valve operation, you have to take the following cautions. You should not touch the safety valve during the operation. The safety valve temperature may be high and as a result of high temperature fluid flowing in. When the safety valve is actuated, fluid blows out the drain pipe. If an open type safety valve should be actuated, fluid would blow out from vicinity of spring. Do not approach here except for cases such as checks. Warning! Remove the test gag. Otherwise, the safety relief valve will not be actuated. When hand blow is intended by operating the lever, conduct the work when pressure is 75% minimum of the set pressure. If the lever is fitted up to conduct the hand blow at pressure less than 75% of the set pressure, the valve failure will be caused. Minimize the hand blow. When the hand blow is attempted, seat tightness may be impaired due to catch of foreign matter. Do not touch the lever during operation. The valve may be actuated at pressure lower than the set pressure. Do not allow anyone other than persons admitted by manufacturers to take off the ceiling wise. Hey guys, I am back in the CMR. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. I hope you've got some uh, information about what you uh, wish to uh, gain from this channel. Please uh, don't forget to leave a comment if there's something you'd like to ask about this piece of equipment. And if there's somebody else who 
you know something additionally which I haven't added, please feel free. I, uh, I would like your comments and your interaction via the comment section below. So for everyone sailing, stay safe, uh, good seas, and uh, hopefully back home soon, and enjoy uh, your stay on board. Take care, God bless.